Hello everyone, it's Sandra, and welcome to today's video. Today, we're going to check in on our beauty favorites from 2022 and see where they stand. Do I still love them? Do I still stand by them? Have I moved on to something else? I love this video concept. I was inspired to do this after watching Charlotte Holcroft do this. So yeah, we're just going to go through the list of all my best of beauty 2022 and uh, check in and see if I still love them or not. I will be filming my 2023 favorites with my friend Dina. We're actually filming it in person this year, which I'm really excited about. She's coming over in a couple days, so that will be coming. Until then, let's check in with our 2022 favorites, shall we? In terms of skincare, I had uh, four skincare favorites. The Biologique Recherche L'Oxygenante, which was like a um, an antioxidant hydrating face mist. I loved that, but I haven't repurchased it. I would repurchase in the future, but I kind of got sidetracked into other mists and hydrating toners and stuff like that. Stuff that was um, stuff that was considerably less expensive than the Biologique Recherche price point. They've had a couple of price increases, and it's just it's just really expensive. And I love I love to treat myself. Love a luxury skincare makeup product, but haven't been compelled to repurchase it this year, but I still love that product. Next um, was the Jordan Samuel Skin Mandelic Exfoliating Mask. This is one of my most repurchased skincare products. I absolutely love this product. It's a really, really gentle exfoliating mask, still very much in rotation. Next, um, my next favorite was the Caudalie Resveratrol Lift Eye Cream. Absolutely love that, still stand by it. I have not repurchased because I'm very lucky that I do get to receive some eye creams in PR. So I'm currently going through other eye creams, but that doesn't mean that I don't love the Caudalie. The Caudalie Resveratrol Lift Eye Cream is something that I still recommend. It's something that I would repurchase in a heartbeat. I am very, very picky when it comes to my eye cream textures. I like my eye creams to be really lightweight, not greasy, but definitely deliver hydration and depuffing and, and smoothing and all that good stuff. And I really enjoyed the Caudalie one. The next uh, skincare favorite was the Saatchi Skin Pro Resilience Serum. This is another one of my holy grail skincare items and it's something that I have repurchased and I'm still using. I definitely like using this more in the fall and winter. It's just a really beautiful, soothing, hydrating antioxidant serum. It plays really beautifully with other products. It's great if you're trying to get your skin used to more intense active ingredients like tretinoin. So I use this in my evening routine now. I just, I wash my face. I put this on. This is also designed to work really well under LED masks. So if I'm doing like my, my red LED mask, I will put this on clean skin underneath and then do the LED mask. And then afterwards I apply my tretinoin. In terms of makeup, we had the Exa Splash Zone Primer, which I still love, I would recommend, and I would revisit, but um, I haven't repurchased it yet this year because I received this in PR and this kind of did the same thing, so I want to wait to use this up before I go back to the Exa. This is the Glow Recipe Strawberry BHA Pore Smooth Blur Drops, and I like this, but I like the Exa better. So both of them are very similar. They are uh, really lightweight primers that help with oil control. So I like the Exa a little bit better, but this was still great. I'm still going to continue using this up. This is obviously a product that I'm not using so much right now. This is more of a summer product for me, but I like the Exa one a tiny bit more. So I would probably go back to that, but I do really want to try the Tom Ford matte primer as well. I hear so many good things about it and my curiosity is definitely peaked. Next we have the uh, Giorgio Armani Luminous Silk Foundation. I actually really loved the Giorgio Armani Luminous Silk Foundation paired with the Exa Primer and once I used up the Exa Primer I haven't been reaching for the Luminous Silk Foundation as much just because this doesn't have the best longevity for me but when I paired it with the Exa Primer it was really beautiful. So next we have the Let's see here, did I delete my note? No, I did not, here it is. Next, we have the Makeup Forever HD Skin Foundation. This is a foundation that I still love. This is in my top three foundations, easy. I'm wearing this foundation today. Absolutely love this. I use this in shade 1N14, and it's such a wonderful foundation, especially if you have combination oily skin. The next favorite was the Charlotte Tilbury Setting Spray. 
This is something that I still love. I actually bought the jumbo size of it this year in the Sephora sale. This is one of my favorite products. Can't be without it. So that's still, still firm favorite. Then I had the BK Beauty 101 brush and the BK Beauty A506 brush. My 101 brush is dirty, but I have the A506 brush here. It's clean. Both of them still absolutely love. This is amazing for concealer. The BK Beauty 101 is amazing for foundation. Still big favorites. Next, I had the Givenchy Prism Libra powder in shade number three. I have this still. This is my favorite under eye powder. This is like a holy grail makeup product for me. I also have the little travel size version of it. Can't be without this. I use this every single day. The Westman Atelier Vital Pressed Powder. I still have this. I still really like this. I haven't been reaching for this as much. This is more of a, again, like a fall, fall winter favorite for me. So now that we're getting, you know, now that winter is, is kicking in, I will probably start reaching for this more. This is just a really great setting powder that is not powdery at all. And I would recommend this if you have more dry skin and you don't like the look of powder, but you want something just to very gently set your face. Works great under the eyes, works great all over the face, really. It's, it's slightly blurring and it's really, really undetectable on the skin, which I like. My next favorite was the Makeup by Mario Soft Sculpt Skin Enhancer in Light Medium. This is something that I still have, I still love, but I have, I have to be honest, I haven't been using this that much this year. I've just been more into powder bronzers this year. I've been focusing really hard to use up my Becca bronzer, which I finally used up. This That was in my project pan. And then I really like the uh, Jones Road bronzer this year. So yeah, I've just been more into powder bronzers this year. So this hasn't been getting as much love, but I did use it today. I do really, really love this product. Um, it's getting a bit getting a bit old and it's a cream product. So I think, I think I'm gonna put this in my project pan for 2024 so I can focus on using this up, but very, very much still a favorite. The next favorite was the Giorgio Armani Neo Nude Balm in the shade 20. I still have this, I still love this. This is one of my favorite blushes that I own. It looks like nothing in the pan, but this is the most incredible neutral nude kind of sculpting blush. I love this on my cheeks. I love this on my eyes as a one and done eyeshadow color. Absolutely obsessed with this, still one of my favorites. Next favorite was Pat McGrath blush in the shade Flirtatious. This is the blush that I'm wearing today. Still absolutely love it. One of my favorite powder blushes that I own and still very much, but it's probably in my, in my top five blushes. Now the next favorite was the Jones Road eyeshadow in the shade Golden Peach. Really liked that, but unfortunately it dried out this year. So I had to declutter it. I think it had like a either six or 12 month shelf life. So it's, it's been, it's past its, it was past its recommended shelf life, but yeah, really liked it. It was great. I bought the Chanel undertone cream shadow instead. And that's kind of what I've been using to achieve the same effect. It's just a little bit more neutral than the uh, Jones Road Golden Peach. So I've, I've been kind of, I've been kind of, I kind of replaced that one with something else. Chantikai Giraffe Eye Quartet. Now this is something that I really loved, but I have not used, I think I maybe used this once or twice this year. I've definitely been neglecting it and I know why. And it's because half of this quad is glitters and I haven't been into glittery eyeshadows as much this year, which is such a shocker. I'm usually all about the glittery eyeshadows, but I've just been, into more of like that subtle sheen. If I want a little bit of shine, the Chanel undertone cream eyeshadow or just something really simple. I still love glitters very much, but I just haven't been gravitating towards them as much. So I think that's why this quad just hasn't been, hasn't been my go-to. I've been using, I think my most used quad this year was uh, Tom Ford Coco Mirage, rest in peace, we will never forget you, which is all matte. So I've just been really more into mattes interesting little shift in my preferences this year. Um, another favorite of mine was the Lisa Eldridge Liquid Lurex. I had two shades, um, Anais and Emily. Anais unfortunately got funky and I had to declutter it. It smelled really, really bad. And uh, this one is still going strong, but again, I haven't been reaching for it as much this year just because I haven't been that much into glitters, but I still have used this a few times and I love the results. I just, yeah, I haven't been into glitters as much this year. I think this was this is gonna be in my project pan for 2024 though, because I've got a little less than half to go and I want to use this up and enjoy every drop before it starts smelling weird and I have to throw it away. 
My next favorite was the Makeup by Mario Ethereal Eyes Palette. This is still very much a favorite, and this is probably, yeah, still my favorite eyeshadow palette in terms of a large, large format eyeshadow palette. Still absolutely love this, but again, haven't really been touching the glitters this year. I've been all about these matte shades. These three, and then these two, I've been using them constantly, and they're just really, really easy. And then sometimes I throw in one of the lighter glitters just in the inner corner, but um, yeah, for the most part, haven't been touching the glitters as much as, as usual this year, but the Makeup by Mario Ethereal Eyes is still, it's probably still my favorite eyeshadow palette this year too. My next favorite was the Swede Pro Lash Lift Mascara. I used that up, I have not repurchased, but that is a mascara that I would like to, to revisit because I really did enjoy it. Um, I also had the Swede Bright Eye Pencil in, in my favorites and I still have that and really love it. It's one of my favorite products to brighten the waterline. And um, this year I also got the Victoria Beckham one. I thought that they would be similar, but they're not. I still like the Swede better and I will show you why. I like the Victoria Beckham, but I like the Swede better because the Swede has a pink undertone. You can see here on the back of my hand that the, uh, the Swede is just that tiny bit brighter. It's brighter, it's got a pink undertone, whereas the Victoria Beckham pencil has more of a, like almost like a nude beige undertone. So I'm wearing the Victoria Beckham today. I actually, I really like both. And this is a type of product that I use every single day, so I don't mind having multiples of it. But when I really, really need extra brightening, the Swede does a better job because of that pink undertone. It just kind of looks... You know, I look bright-eyed and bushy-tailed, but if I still want a nice bright waterline, but not as bright, I just want it to be a little bit more toned down and just a little bit more natural looking, the Victoria Beckham does the job. In terms of longevity, I honestly can't tell the difference between the two. They're both just equally as long wearing in my waterline. My next favorite was the Cali Ray Mascara. This was such a heartbreak for me because I have repurchased that mascara twice and it's been a bust both times, so I don't know what magic was in that first tube I had, or maybe just my eyelashes changed and now they just suck even more, but the Cali Ray Mascara has not been as good as I remember it being. So I don't think I want to risk buying it again and being heartbroken again. My next favorite was the Pat McGrath Lip Pencil in the shade Contour. I have not touched this at all this year, so I don't know, I don't know why. I should probably bust it out. It's a really great lip liner. There's nothing wrong with it. Um, the other favorite was the Victoria Beckham Lip Definer in shade number two. This is still in rotation, one of my favorite lip liners. I use this all the time. I also had the Charlotte Tilbury Lipstick in the shade Pillow Talk, which I have not used at all this year either. <laughs> not sure what happened there. My next favorite was the Clarins Lip Oil in the shade Raspberry. Absolutely loved it and I actually used it up. I love the Clarins Lip Oils. They, they've been a standby in my makeup bag since, I think since they first launched. And right now I'm using Cherry. My next favorite was the Elisa Eldridge Insanely Sh Saturated Lip Color in Strawberry Shock. Still love it. Probably my favorite bright red lip for spring summer. I am wearing a red lip today. It's not Strawberry Shock though. This is more, um, a little bit darker. Then I also loved the Dior Attic Lipstick in Mimi Rose, which I still love, still a favorite. The Merit Signature Lip in Cabo, still love it, but I haven't been reaching for it as much this year. I just haven't really been into orangey reds on myself as much. I used to be all about the orangey reds, but now I'm kind of liking more of um, a slightly more of a, a strawberry red on me. The Chantecaille Lip Chic in Prairie Smoke, love that. Still, it was a limited edition color, but I haven't been wearing it as much because I've been focusing on using this one up. This is one of my oldest lip chics, and again, I want to, I love it so much. It's a really easy My Lips But Better color, and I just want to use it up before it goes bad, and this, this is almost done. It's the um, Chantecaille Lip Chic in the shade Honeysuckle, so this is what I've been using. I've been using this or the, um, the shade Patience the most. The Chantecaille Lip Chics, though, are top tier for me, one of my favorite lipstick formulas on the market. Then I had two fragrance favorites to close it out, the uh, Coriander and Debaser from DS and Durga. I still love both of these, but I definitely wear Coriander more. I think if I had to choose between the two, I would definitely choose Coriander, just in terms of a, of a, a year-round signature scent. It is 
everything I like in a fragrance. My only gripe is that it's not as long wearing as I would like it to be. I just want to douse myself in this fragrance as much as possible. It's woody, it's clean, it's soapy, it's fresh. It just smells, it smells so good. It smells so good no matter the season, no matter the occasion. I always just feel really, really good when I put this fragrance on. It's just, ah, oh, it's so good. I think if you like Atelier Cologne, Clementine, California, and Le Labo Santal 33, this is kind of in the middle. It's got like elements of both, but it's not, it, it's, it's kind of, it's in the middle. I definitely think if you like those two fragrances, you will like this too. It's not similar to those by any means, but they share a very similar DNA. It's that, that freshness, that cleanness, that delightful woodiness. Those are my 2022 favorites revisited. This was so much fun to do, and I honestly wish that everyone that does yearly favorites videos on YouTube did this too, because it's a really great chance to check in on those old faves. Do we still love them? Have we re replaced them? So if you're a content creator, you're watching this, you need an idea of a video to do, do this because it's really fun. And I want to know where your 2022 favorites are. So I'll be seeing you soon with, uh, with my 2023 roundup. But until then, I really appreciate you hanging out with me today. I hope you're having a beautiful day and I will see you in my next video. Bye.